from when they passed away. Um, some people have to grieve the fact that they never were able to have that conversation, um, that they left things unresolved. or That is part of grief as well. And uh, forgiving yourself, you know, that, that is part of grief. Fortunately, that's something that I, that I didn't didn't have to experience in, in the main in the main mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I think that, that the lesson from that is and we just had this as well with the passing of uh, Kobe Bryant as well there were so many people just sharing like you know don't 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 leave things unresolved with people that you love mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. just give them a call just chat to them work it out have the conversation just because you never know what's going to happen you, you know? never know and that tomorrow's stupid, promise but... to no one but it, it, yeah, it just puts everything in perspective, doesn't it? It just, mm-hmm. um, it really does. Yeah. Hold on, James. We have another caller. We have caller Patty on the line. And it, uh, did I, did we let Joe go? Uh, Joe, I'm still here. Oh, but I was gonna say thank you so much for calling in. We're about to take a next break, but I have another caller. But, but thanks for sharing your story, Joe, and for calling in. And we'll talk soon. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Have a nice day. Thanks, James. And bye bye. And Patty, welcome to Moments of Clarity. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. How can we help? Um, I don't know. I have a lot of grief mixed with anger and frustration. And my grandson is still alive, and he's not even too far from here. And uh, I can't contact him or get near him. Or The corrupt DSS took him nine years ago. And uh, the only way I can describe this kind of grief when you know you did not neglect or abuse a child and they accused you of crazy stuff that was not true and um, you're standing in a receiving line and everybody is slapping you across the face Mm. and that's how it feels and uh, you can't get anybody they'll follow you they followed me everywhere they followed me to therapy they harassed me so bad that uh, my therapist told me not to even come to group therapy because he was going to be in there. And um, you can't get any relief. You can't get any anything. And you just grieve. And I don't know. I've got a missing brother that I miss. And I have a, a brother that died in 2010, right before this. And my father died in 1999. And my mother died in the middle of all this, and, and even in her Alzheimer's, I was taking care of her, and they were after our house trying to get me for uh, neglecting her, and I didn't, and thank God for Adult Protective Services, because they're the ones that saved me from that. Mm. And um, I just mm. don't know what to do with all this grief and pain and hurt and anger, and I don't know where to put it all. <sighs> Yeah, it's. I mean, that's that's really rough. I mean, all that loss that you're going through, and then loss of somebody that's still here, and that you can't be with, and yeah, that's unbearable. Losing a child like that too. I'm so sorry that you're going through all that, Patty. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so upset. It's okay. I mean, that's what we're doing today. We're all trying to be supportive for each other. Grief is just raw. I I, yeah. I know a grief counselor, and, I, ta- and um, I had a chat to her once, and she told me that one of the things that happened is like grief. She just one when she was grieving, she just had this moment where she just went up to her room and just, and it wasn't even screaming; it was just grief coming out of her body, um, and it just got released. And one of the phrases that my friend. Uh, who's a grief counsellor, says is we need to give ourselves permission to grieve. It's mm-hmm. okay to grieve. It's okay to have grief that we need to get out. You know, and yes, you need to have, see experts and talk to people about about it. You need to, maybe, whether it's therapy or counselling or any kind of support and to have There's people no around. There's nowhere to you. go because they're all mm-hmm. in it together. The therapist. Now, I have yeah. a doctor that uh, she talked on my behalf in court and they lied in the document. They said she was my son's daughter and she was there. And that, that was a blatant lie. She had nothing but good things to say about me. 
This mm-hmm. is what they do to you. I want people to understand how corrupt this system is and how they yeah. try to break you. Hey, Patty, where do you live? Like, what state? Wilmington, North Carolina, and it's a corrupt city as hell. They got, they got, in in uh, just a matter of months, there's three teachers right now. I'm sorry, two teachers and one custodian. It's all coming out now about sexual abuse with these kids in these schools. This is the most corrupt town and city that you could ever even imagine. Mm-hmm. And I thank God that the sexual abuse is coming out. But it still needs there's it still needs to come out with this uh VSS corruption. It's bad, I'm telling you, it's bad and I'm not the only one grieving I'm not, for I'm this. Not. You know, Patty, there yeah, are I'll online see. therapists and other resources that I could hook you up with too that wouldn't be affiliated with anyone in that town. So message me after the show, okay? And um I'd be happy okay. to help uh, try to find someone that's yeah not involved, that is a professional, and that can help you. Well, yeah. I don't have the money to do it. We'll, so. we'll, we'll, we'll research that, too. Yeah. But, but hang Sorry, in there. And, and I know that, you know, that's very painful, and, and it's a lot, especially when you feel like you're falsely accused, and I, yeah. I completely, my heart goes out to you. Polar, he's got bipolar, yeah. and him and I live together, and, and so- uh, it's just, they just distorted everything. All right, my son has a fetish, okay? I just come out and say, stupid fetish. They come to the house, got a fetish in his bedroom, and they have judged everything on that stupid fetish. What's and the there's fetish? so much more to him, and there's so much more to me, and there's so much more to my grandson. And it wasn't yeah. like they, oh, God, they accused my son and me of having sex together. You just don't, you can't even imagine Mm. There's a lot of grieving going on there, and a lot more than grief as well. There's a lot yeah. of pain. A lot of pain. But, um, yeah, and as Tiffany said, get that support. Yeah. And I'm sure we can. Yeah, a lot of people struggle with pain. I struggle with, with, with financing therapy sometimes as well. So I think there are options out there. So um, I know Tiffany can will, will help you with that. But yeah, my heart goes out to you as well. I'm like, really, 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 really sorry for what, you, what you're going through. It's really awful. And thank you for calling in and for sharing your story, Patty. We we have to take our second break and um, and message me after the show, okay? Um, oh, thank you. Have a nice day. Good luck. And it's time for our second break, James. So hang on the line, and we will be back with Moments of Clarity in just a moment. Please stay tuned. We will return to Moments of Clarity with Tiffany Warner after these messages. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Are you looking for a great book? If you like to root for the underdog, Joe Potosi's book is a book for you. A real American odyssey that will grab your attention with its fast-moving narrative. You won't be able to put this masterpiece down. When the Dust Settled by Joe Potosi. Go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or Zulin Press. Hi, this is Tiffany Warner, your host of Moments of Clarity. Living with a mental health disorder is not easy. If you or someone you know are struggling with this, please know it's so important to seek treatment and I'm here to help. Please visit the website at momentsofclaritywithtiffany.com to view blog posts and resources on this site to help educate and inspire you to take action because there's no shame in seeking help for mental health. While you're there, please take a few seconds to sign up for my email list. You'll get some extremely valuable educational and entertaining content that can be sent right to your inbox each week. Plus, you'll also get instant and free access to my guide on managing your anxiety. You can also follow me on Twitter at MOC with Tiffany and at Facebook at Tiffany Warner. And once again, the website is Moments of Clarity with Tiffany.com. Thank you so much for your support and for listening to your show because change can only come when we stand together as one. Are you or your loved ones suffering from addiction to drugs or alcohol? My name is Steven Sunquist and I am a recovered addict. You are not alone. My team of dedicated professionals at All In Solutions Counseling Center is waiting to help you. With our evidence based services, you can rely on us to help get your life back. We accept most major insurances and offer a variety of treatment options. Call now, 561-289-0779. Again, that number is 561-289-0779. Three years ago, I made the call. Will you? This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Now back to Moments of Clarity with Tiffany Werner, licensed mental health counselor. 
To engage in the conversation, call 866-826-1340. Here's Tiffany. Hi, and welcome back. If you're just tuning in, this is Moments of Clarity. My name is Tiffany Warner. I am a licensed mental health counselor, and I'm your host. And today we're using our experiences with grief and loss to help share our journey and and coping skills and and also to share that you're not alone and that you know life is hard and we um we have struggles and we're here to listen as well and you're welcome to call in 866-826-1340 866-826-1340 today marks the 25th anniversary since my mother's passing so we are using this time and this hour to help others and and share our story and with me is my friend james prescott who lost his mother 20 years ago and we're talking about how we got through it and what's and ways to cope with stress and grief and welcome back james thank you so much yeah good to good to be back um yeah it's been really great i mean really great to hear from people today mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. yeah so i mean so many so many of us are grieving so many different things right. but the stories that we've heard that there isn't just grieving about people passing away there's grieving at lost relationships and grieving at families being torn apart and grieving of you know that there's so many different ways that we we grieve um so many different things mm-hmm. you know losing a pet as well you right. know there's so many things like uh, the day the first day a child goes to school the first day of school is a grieving experience for the parents because they're letting their child go you know there's a there's an element of grief there that you, <laughs> you're letting the child go into school and you have to stay behind. Sometimes, you know, but, you know, summer, like, I can't wait for my kids to go back to school on that one. Well, so, yeah, but, I mean, the first time after you, they've been with you the for... The very first five, time daycare or something or kindergarten, sure. It's, I mean, there yeah. are so many different feelings of loss, and like just what you're saying, and just from the callers today, and I appreciate everyone calling in and sharing such tragic stories mm-hmm. and, and ways that they coped, and... Um, but, I mean, it just shows how many different levels of grief that we can go through. It's not only death that causes us grief. And um, Ed, do we have another caller? Yeah, we have caller Kenny. Hi, Kenny. Hi. Welcome to Moments of Clarity. Thanks for calling in. Hello, Hello Kenny. Hello, Mr. Knight. Hi. Tiffany, how are you? Hi, Kenny. <laughs> Hi, Kenny. How are you? I'm doing, well, we're doing a show on grief, but I'm doing okay. <laughs> I mean, I think this is the main issue for me, besides all the other issues I have, but this this is the main one I'm thinking. Okay. (laughs) Okay, but I'm wondering, you know, yesterday's program, you know, there were all my comments yesterday, and and the one that wound up being a discussion that I added to it about... On Facebook, you mean? Yeah, on Facebook, a little past 1 o'clock in the morning here, I guess 4 o'clock your time. And now what I just commented right before that I called in, you know, me and you have been talking about this for a lot of years now, right? We're talking about like five, six years, I'm thinking. Okay. What are we talking about? We're talking about the abuse of children, child right. abuse. Yes, yes. And especially the sexual child abuse of children. Yeah. And um, do you have something to share about that with grief? I mean, obviously that with that is a whole different topic. That. Right, okay, but, but the grief yeah. thing, I can go through my grief. Uh, supposedly my mom, the, the mother on my birth certificate, which I, I have major doubts on, she died. And the next day, I'm like, I remember every little detail of my life after, but nothing about the day before. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, was I in the car when she died and had a head trauma or whatever? <laughs> and what I've been told just doesn't make sense. You know, I, I think I figured it all out. But now you throw in the sexual child abuse, the physical abuse, the the mental abuse, and all of that, you know, I mean, it's become a life mission that I just cannot believe that this goes on to the level that it does in this country, and nobody wants to talk about it, and nobody wants to even try and do anything about it. Everybody wants to help the victim, okay, the, the child that grows up traumatized, or but nobody wants to try and prevent it from happening. And it's literally nine, 95% of the homeless had fucked, uh, excuse me, not very good childhood. You know, the homeless, men, men in prisons, about 95%. 
the LGBTQ community a major percentage. Almost all of society's ills are caused by the abuse of children. Mm-hmm. Most of it 